Well, it's PM season. Got us a Seagam here. And a cute little uh, Lockenvar copper fin. These are probably one of the easiest boilers, in my opinion, to PM. You just got to be careful uh, down in the uh, burner section down here, which I will uh, show you when I get to that point. So on a Lockenvar copper fin, this bottom door has to remain on in order for the boiler to burn. And you can see that here from the combustion motor, which pulls the combustion air from back there. There's a little filter. It pulls it into the cabinet here and then pressurizes down here and forces the air and the gas in for combustion. These do have a hot surface igniter. So that's one thing to check and I, uh, even though it's not hard to figure out, but I like to, again, set things up for somebody else. You know, left, middle, middle right, and then right. Again, could somebody figure it out? Sure, but I like to, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, plan for stupid. Not saying that people are stupid, but I'm sure you can get the understanding. I know a lot of guys, and I've seen a lot of guys before, they've tried to take this uh, bottom door off. That's behind here is where the uh, heat exchanger is. This is a uh, water tube. Um, you, I've seen guys, they leave the burners in and pull the door, but I'll tell you, like, when to get the angle, because you got you, you got to do like this, because you got all the weight pushing down up here, it gets into the refractory on the bottom, and it can just really damage it. So me, personally... I like to pull them. I mean, yeah, it's a lot more screws and all that, but I mean, are we trying to do it fast or are we trying to do a good job? So I pull them out, got all my burners lined up, and then, oh, sorry, all my manifolds lined up, and then I have all my burners lined up, and I even went so far as to uh, number them. I mean, they can go, almost all of them can go anywhere, but then you got one like right there. That has the nipple for where the, uh, where it's sensing off of the pressure switch. Which I'll show you. So off of the pressure switch is this little pilot tubing. And that connects into number eight which is what that one was. But anyways, this is what I like to do. Yeah, it's a lot more screws, but tell you what, I'm also not damaging refractory um, in the name of uh, being too lazy to take out, you know, two screws. This thing had 14 burners, so that'd be 28 screws. Like, come on, how much time does that really take? And you're also not damaging the refractory, which is in the bottom and down there. And I'll show you once I get it, but I mean, you can see how charred nasty. And then the refractory is also right here as well. So, I don't know. You do you, but uh, this is how I do it because I don't cause any extra unwanted problems. or. And it's just, to me, the couple extra steps sometimes it takes could be the difference between something going wrong and everything going right. No, just food for thought from my opinion. All right, got the door taken off, and here's your heat exchanger right here. Now, again, this is a water tube. So all your burners will be down here, water in the tube, and you have to take these rings off, clean in between them. Um, you can see the ends right there. There's the manifolds where all the heated water goes or may, and on that side it would just be making the turn because you can kind of see here's your manifold right here inlet and outlet the water's coming in getting heated up goes back and into the building it's literally these things are as simple as that they are not complicated boilers at all this is actually one of the uh, easiest boilers I've ever worked on to PM. You just gotta be careful and 
pay attention to what you're doing. You don't want to uh, destroy the refractory at all. The stuff is very soft. It's not like on the uh, bigger boilers where it uh, tends to be more like a uh, concrete type re refractory. I'm sure that's not the uh, technical term for it, but if you've worked around them before, you uh, understand. Yeah, this is just a little guy. It, uh, in Austin here, they don't really have big boilers, or if they do, I haven't w seen them yet, but uh, whatever, it's work, and I'm happy to do it. So I got my brush on here. It's just a, uh, it's got a quarter inch chuck, so you could put in an impact, but I've never used it on an impact. And uh, here it is, it's a hard stiff brush. Uh, sorry, I don't know the brand, but uh, here is the uh, tag on it. And then uh, I always either put a piece of PVC or uh, in this case, I have seal tight on there. It makes for a great little handle while you're trying to uh, <coughs> clean it out. So, just thought you guys would see this, huh? Maybe there's something on here. Made in China. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah there's, sorry, there's no information on there. But anyways, <coughs> this is what I use. I use my little uh, blower right here to try and clear out all the crap and then I'm gonna take the brush and just go along there I also brought another little brush right here to get in the nooks and crannies and then I have like a uh, a brush that you'd use to clean dishes they, they seem to work pretty good um, I have used water on these before I don't normally but I will lay down trash bags and all that down at the bottom you really don't want to get the refractory wet so I try not to, but when they're really bad, I have uh, done that before and it's uh, it's helped out, but it's it wouldn't be my go-to, that's for sure. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Dang dust. Anyways, time to get at. So I'm cleaning off in between the tubes and what I found works really good is one of these like kitchen brushes right here. You want uh, something that has um, harder-ish nylon bristles but you can watch I don't know if it's coming through on the uh, screen uh, it's not but anyways this gets up in there and really cleans the crap out of these things so yeah it's not showing up on here but there's a freaking <coughs> There's a cloud of oh crap coming out at me. But uh, this, this little simple, cheap little thing really does a wonder. All right, all right, all right. What a great movie, Dazed and Confused. Got her all put back together. As I said before, you have to have this bottom door on because the combustion blower blows into the chamber where all the uh, burners and everything are. Um, there's a little uh, piece of advice when you take apart and you drop when you drop the burners down this main gas trunk right here will will drop down and it is a freaking pain in the butt so uh, I didn't do it this time because you know I'm not a smart man but uh, what I advise people to do is get something like a piece of a pole or a pipe or something like that and when you disconnect these unions put it in here and make it just a little bit taller than what it is right now and it'll hold the gas train up and it makes it a lot easier because with all this weight coming down when you're trying to put those manifolds back on underneath there it is really heavy and it's a pain in the butt that's probably the worst part but other than that these things are I mean they're simple but uh so what I found on this one was, so here's where you're setting your set point. Then you have your differential and high fire offset. The differential is between the high fire and low fire, or sorry. Um, I'll have to read up what that is. I thought it was, but the high, the high fire offset is obviously self-explanatory. 
What I found here was they had the set point set at 150. Well, I mean, this is Austin, so I give them a break that they don't probably know as much about boilers as, you know, somebody who works on them all the time or in your colder climates. But the problem with setting it at 150 is, is the return water temperature. Um, since this is a non-condensing boiler, you do not want return water temperature below 140 degrees or you will get into the condensing range. That's what those mod cons and like, you know, Lock and Vars and Viesman, even Well McLean and whatnot, those, those boilers, yeah, you actually want colder return water. You don't want 150, 160 return water because you're taking the boiler out of the condensing range and you're basically turning it into a really expensive conventional boiler. Well, the opposite is true on something like this. You want the return water above 140 so you are not in the condensing range. Another little trick if you want to, which I, I just wanted to test everything. Let's see if I can do this uh, one handed here. And what I'm doing is right here on the low fire enable. I'm putting one side of that. This is honestly harder to do with one hand. So if you want to do a quick test, put some jumpers on the low fire enable. And here, combustion blower going. And then a pre-purge. See if I can get a, they have a little window down here, which is kind of cool. You can see the uh, hot surface igniter. There's the hot surface igniter right there. Going for a trial for ignition. You can see the hot surface igniter starting to glow. I already did test this once, but uh, didn't get it on video. It's not exactly a cold day today either, so. And there we go. You can barely see the flames, but. There you go, yay. We have liftoff.